Nice. Well, first, uh, let's start off. You're, you are, pronounce your name, Andy Inglesos? Inglesos. Inglesos, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, band, yeah. He, of uh, the band Brother to Birds uh, from Australia, Melbourne, Australia. Yep. And yeah, I'm the so, runner. Brother to the Birds, that's right. Brother to the Birds. So and I'm the runner, and uh, he agreed to do this interview. So I thank you for that. But I'm going to tell you, um, first of all, I really like your music. Um, one, you can sing. Okay, you've got great vocals. Uh, even you know, it, sometimes music will drown out vocals, and the music kind of acts as a buffer for bad vocals sometimes. But yours are really good, and I really like your acoustics Thank to your music. So, Thank you, my friend. That's lovely. That's uh, that's very encouraging to hear from from the other side of the planet. That's absolutely lovely. Oh, absolutely. Listen, it's good music, and and and. Uh, have you ever heard of Jose Gonzalez? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I discovered his music from The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, the movie. Yeah, yeah. And I downloaded that, that uh, soundtrack, and your music kind of reminded me of that with the acoustics and just the, the very, just very mature and innocent vocals. And then Angus and Julia Stone. Mmm, Cool. So, well, um, mate, if I, if I sound anything half like <laughs> those people, then, then, um, then, then I, I am wrapped, and, and I'm, I'm going to go into a great, a great rest of the day hearing that. So thanks, mate. No, That's I, I'm, I'm very honest. Uh, I don't lie. Um, and again, I pick, I, I try to pick good artists to play on my radio station. But that's what you reminded me of. Um, you know, it's like you've, we've got the Mumford and Sons thing going on here. It's kind of um, and I, you know, you, you kind of reminded me of that, but I was leaning more towards the Angus and Julia aspect. Cool. Yeah, totally. Great, great, great lyrics, great vocals, and just fantastic music. So we'll walk through your, uh, your digital album, but tell me, you know, and, and just, just so you know, I do this off the cuff. Okay. I don't have any, I may write some things down, but there's no, no order, yep. nothing. That's how I like it, mate. I like it off the cuff. That yeah, is, it's, that's it's, you know, that's the way to style. do it. That's the way to do it. You know, no intimidation. I'm not going to ask you something that's going to embarrass you. <laughs> Nothing like that's that. That's a shame. I, cause that, that, that you have missed. I, I actually do like a little bit of a bit of shame, a little bit of vulnerability, <laughs> a little bit of embarrassment. Just a little. I don't mind that. So that's okay. If you get there, we'll be okay. Oh, no, no, no worries. Um, you may hear my dogs in the background, but I do this from my home, so. Um. That's okay. You, you'll probably hear my cat as well. She's going, she's going crazy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Brother to the Birds. Uh, I, I was reading a book by a theologian fellow called um, Francis Schaeffer. And Francis Schaeffer was talking, funnily enough, about uh, St. Francis of Assisi in, uh, in, in his book and, and talking about St. Francis, who was a monk uh, back in the day in, in Italy, in Umbria, uh, in, in a, from a, well, he, he, his main town, I think, or hangout was Assisi, is a lovely little town there which I visited in, in Italy, in Umbria. And, uh, and I, I guess I was really uh, quite inspired by, by the words and the life of uh, St. Francis, um, St. Francis was known for, uh, I believe he's a patron saint of animals. Uh, he, he was actually uh, really cared a lot about the environments and a lot about animals. He'd spent a lot of time in nature. He spent time uh, with the animals. There's a lot of folklore for my first EP. So I, um, yeah, so Brother of the Birds, he, he was known to, to preach to the birds when, uh, when, the, when the humans wouldn't listen to him. I thought that was that was quite interesting, um, and sometimes I think, yeah, I'm not always heard. People don't always hear what I have to say or sing, but um, I know that there's uh, even if it's just the birds that are out there that'll have a listen, then I'll then I'll have a crack at it. Well, hey, whatever they're doing, you're producing some really good music. We'll have a crack at we'll have a crack at sitting closer to the internet hub of the world. Um, so, I, I look, obviously, I don't know how much you missed, but the, the main thing was that Brother of the Birds came from a title that was given to St. Francis of Assisi, yes. um, which I, I, would, I would never... Um, you can see my tree there. Yeah. I, I would never compare myself to St. Francis. Sure, sure. But, 
but St. Francis was humble enough to compare himself to the birds. Right. So uh, I at least would be happy to say I am a brother to the birds. Uh, they're definitely not anywhere near the level of humility as, as St. Francis, but... Um, but yeah, I, I guess my music, I, uh, a lot of my music's about nature mm -hmm. and about some of the symbols that come from nature in terms of um, um, beauty and uh, I suppose nature can be quite scary and it can be unpredictable and life can be a bit like that as well, but it can also be beautiful and real and, and incredible, so... Well, I, hey, listen, I, I think you capture all of that. I, again, I think your music is, I think your music represents the innocence of nature. Uh, and I really like listening to it loud because I can hear all those riffs and, you know, strumming going along and, and just all the acoustics. And it, it's, it, it is very good. And I, I love that. I, I, I really love that. Thanks, Mike. Tell me about your, your website. Um, I like your website, uh, especially the link bird watching. With your videos, I thought, that, yeah. <laughs> I thought that was clever. I thought that was clever. Uh, Thanks, but mate. <laughs> let's talk about your photos and, and the folks that, because uh, I'll upload this to YouTube, by the way. But the folks that watch this video, I would say go to the brothers, brother to the birds dot com and take a look at his images. Very interesting photography. Um, I like it. Mm -hmm. It's 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 different, and it's not like you went out there and just took a bunch of pictures. Hey, I'm an artist. No, there's there's some. There's some design behind that and some meaning, and so talk talk to me about some of the photographs, the idea behind yeah. the photographs. Well, look, I knew I had to go somewhere that uh, that was oh, sorry, mate. I know I had to go somewhere that it was uh, in nature, uh, somewhere that was was uh, beautiful in terms of taking the photos, because I'm not not really the most uh, beautiful person in the world. Um, but for me to, to sort of to go somewhere that was in nature and, and captured uh, a beautiful place was, was important. So I took out uh, a photographer with me called Peter Ingemals. Um So Peter Ingemals is, is responsible for, uh, for those photos. Um, and we, we went to a place. So I'm from a, a place called Melbourne, which is, mm -hmm. which is a, a city, a big city in, in Australia. About three... Uh, Three hours out of Melbourne is a town called Mansfield, out in the um, the east side of of the state, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's quite a beautiful uh, green area. So we found, uh, well, Peter took me to these places where where we just were able to shoot some really moody, really interesting uh, photos, and and uh, yeah, he he, uh, he he's really the person to thank for that. I definitely am not a not a visual. Uh, <laughs> visually uh, artistic person so um, yeah so Peter Peter's got some amazing photos I was, I was very very lucky to be able to work with him well no I, I'm I have them up now and there's one I, I can't t it's like you're coming out of you're holding a frame uh, obviously there's some there's some Photoshop going on there <laughs> <laughs> no no it's all uh, we went to a very magical land yeah, right. in Australia. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, that's a there pretty cool photo. That's a pretty cool <laughs> Thanks, photo. Thanks, mate. Yeah, um, no, look, he, he had some good ideas. So uh, I think that frame it was a funny one because uh, my wife's friend gave it to her and, and we never sort of were able to use it for anything. And then Peter says, oh, you, yeah. should, you should bring a few props out to, to the countryside. And we brought this frame out and uh, it, it was uh, quite, quite useful for the shot. Yeah, that's pretty clever. That's pretty. I, I like it. it. Your your site, most and I'm not going to criticize any any of the other artists, but yours is different. It's it's like it's clean, it's pure, and um, you you have some really good photos to accompany your uh, your website and your music. Um, <clears throat> so let's let's get into your music. Um, I think I read you. Did you start working with Dallas Cosmos in 2013? Yeah, yeah. So I think we started recording around then. And, um, yeah, I mean, I'd sort of always been around his music, okay. but that was the first time I got to, uh, to really record, uh, you know, my own EP, which mm -hmm. was really good experience for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's very good. So he's, uh, he's got a few, a few different artists that he's, he's done some records with under prototype music. Mm -hmm. So I've been, been blessed enough to be part of the uh, prototype family the last couple of years. No, he, he has some. He has some pretty good artists under him. And um, I was going to ask you. I think I only have a couple of songs from you. 
So when I upload this video, um, it'll be on YouTube, but then now what I'm doing is I started converting the videos to MP3s and I'm loading them at the top of the Indie Rock Hour. And then I will load maybe four or five of your songs after the interview when it airs live. And then you'll be tagged when that goes up. You'll get a tweet uh, so you can direct your fans to that. Um, That's so awesome, man. It's, you know, I, I guess I enjoy doing it. It's fun. I, and I just kind of I, I look around to see because uh, here's the here's the challenge we have with our alter alternative rock and indie music. Um, so let's get into uh, what is it? Umbrian Brother. Let's hear a little bit mm. about that and then let's talk about it. Yeah. So this is Umbrian Brother, and I'm going. It's on your band, uh, your band, uh, Bandcamp page. So let me start over. I was listening to it earlier. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's good. Who's playing the guitar? That's me playing guitar, singing a few bits and pieces. Okay. And Dallas Cosmos on the uh, on the very subtle snare. That happens a bit later in the song. Yeah, your vocals are clean. Your vocals are really clean. Thanks, mate. So I'm gonna I'm gonna speed up a little bit here. Do, do double speed. Double speed's great. It makes lot the pitch go nice and high. <laughs> I just I, I like that. I like that. It's it's very subtle. And again, it's just, it's you. That's a good sound, man. So mm. tell me about how, yeah, well, how, look, how they look, come about. Uh, it, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, look, you've kind of picked it in a way. <laughs> you know, it's it's me. Uh, it's definitely me. I can tell you that. Um, funnily enough, like one of the lines in the song is, um, you look so perfect when you're not perfect. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I picked up out of the, uh, just reading about St. Francis was this, I suppose recognizing the beauty in things even when they're really not perfect and I actually made for me what was a bit of a, a mistake a bit of a bungle playing the guitar on the recording of that track um, and I said to Dallas oh no we've got to do another take he's like no nah, it doesn't matter no one will notice I said no nah, look I wasn't happy with it and uh, we did another take and it just never really worked out so we ended up going with the, the first take that was to me was quite imperfect mm -hmm. but now I mean it really sort of makes up um, part of the song, you know, the chord goes, it goes to like a, like a, um, the fourth chord is, goes suspended. It wasn't meant to suspend. Um, and, uh, but, but yeah, for me, yeah, you know, that song is really about the, um, uh, well, part of it's about that imperfection. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that, uh, Dallas, in a way, he was sort of captured a realness, uh, in my singing and my, uh, my music that that's uh, we call it homegrown. We call it yeah, homegrown yeah. folk. You yeah. know, it, it doesn't sound big and polished, and and often the things uh, things get left unpolished, right. and it uh, it just makes for a, I think a bit more of an intimate listening sometimes. Absolutely, I agree. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, so I, totally I mean, in that song as well it is also about um, uh, not not having to rush things and not having to uh, fix everything up. Sometimes things in life will come at their right time. And uh, like a cattail coming out of your head, you just accept life as it is. Right. You know, you can't explain it. You can't stop the cattail. No, there it goes. You can stop the cattail. She's gone. Now. Um, you, you, you know that the. I mean, the other thing in that song is just about, um, I suppose, freeing ourselves from having to make things happen and from chemicals and from quick fix you know sometimes sure. it's, it's a matter of letting life play its course well you know what it's uh, the term organic around because i'm using it too much in my videos yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but, but it was it, it, it was natural you know so mm. um you know i and, and that's what i like to do i like to, i like to find you guys and put you out there because i have an appreciation for the the singer songwriter you know i can make a song in four hours with software <laughs> You know, but what mm. you guys do, you, the Puss Puss Band, the, the Cuckoos, um, A Million Reasons, I mean, you guys write your music. It takes time, you know, and discipline. Mm. And I, you know, I applaud you for that. So enough about me. Let's get into uh, Winter's Ending. This is my favorite song. 
Thank you. I, I noticed you must like it because you played it. You played that a couple of times. I thought, oh, that's that's nice. <laughs> I really do like it. I, I seriously, I, I do. Let's play Winter's Ending, Brothers of the Birds. I, I really like the beginning of it. Yeah, it's just this is good stuff. Thanks, matey. Winter's ending. I told you so. And you know, when I was listening to this, I can hear the ethereal the willows weeping. Just below. It's very, very subtle. Mm. And I wish you guys would have brought it up a little bit. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pass it on to Dallas. I'll I let him know we need to push push the ethereal just a, up just, just a, a little, little bit. Just a little, little bit. bit. <laughs> and I, I'm hearing some strings in there, too. Well, look, you're hearing things that that aren't there, but that was part of the, uh, part of the plan, I think. That yeah. sometimes um, the record... It alludes to, alludes to things that you think you're hearing or you want to hear, but exactly. your brain probably fills in the gaps a little bit, which which is, uh, I think, mission accomplished. Yeah, no, it's it's perfect. I actually cranked it way up because I kept hearing things. And, you know, when you're into music, you do, you hear the things that you want to hear or there's, you just, you, 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 you know, you just, I don't know. It, it's, it's just natural. You just, it happens, you know? And I was actually going to play... Uh, I was gonna drop your song in Tractor and put some strings on it and let you hear it. I just didn't, I haven't had, I work a full-time job, I, I haven't had time. <laughs> but I like to play around, you know. If, if you do that, mate, I'll send you a $20 Amazon gift voucher just for you. <laughs> I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> I please, will. Please do, please I, do. I will, there's, there's yeah. so much. Uh, I just have fun with the music. That's all. Have fun with it. No, that's great, mate. That's that's that's. that's a, I'm humbled to hear that, that oh, you yeah. would think about remixing it, mate. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know what? If I had more time, there's so much I'd like to do. Not just with your music. There's other arts. I just don't have time. I don't. Tell me about it, mate. Well, that, I mean, I think that's part as well of, of what uh, what for me is a challenge of, of songwriting is actually finding the time to do it. So you talk about. It taking a long time to write a song. For me, a song could take me three years to finish. Yep. yep. Um, uh, and, and that might partly be to do with my, my lack of skill or as a songwriter, no. <laughs> but it, it could just be as well because these things take time and, uh, and that can be hard to, t to, to come by. Well, you know, one thing that I will say that uh, I am, I'm hearing a common theme from a lot of the artists, I'm talking about the ones that write their music. You have to be in the right mood, and especially if you're doing vocals, that creativity comes from dark places sometimes. Oh, absolutely. You yeah. Know? So I mean, yeah. I'm guessing you might have heard that a little bit in in that song, and and, and maybe some of the others is that um, for me, uh, these songs on this particular EP, they pretty much all came out of dark times for me. Now I've tried to inject some some sure. hope into that. Um, but yeah, definitely for me, I think my most uh, heartfelt moments will, will come out of my my crappiest moments. But that's you know what? That's a way to channel that energy into something positive. Mm. You know, as it's kind of like it's kind of like heavy metal for it, soft right. folk music. Hey, whatever works, you know, uh, whatever <laughs> works. But you you have obviously uh, put put your work in on these tracks. And uh, the vocals, Thanks, are, yeah, it, it's superb. And um, you know, you can't appreciate this listening to it on this. No, oh, no, you've got yeah. even. I, I was shocked when, when I listened to it on the iPhone. I was shocked. I was like, "Oh no, what have we done?" <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> and, and then, and then you listen to it. Uh, I suppose on a anything but an iPhone, and it, and it sounds it sounds great. Oh, so, the bigger the speed. Uh, but, but again, again, mate. I mean, it's uh, I guess one of the big learning processes for me uh, as sort of be, I suppose becoming an artist really was realizing the the role of the producer and how much of their talent and skill and, and vision uh, comes into a project and that mm -hmm. the singer you know the the artist is is really a, a small part of the puzzle or an important part of the puzzle but definitely not the whole puzzle and um, i mean really a lot of the sounds 
uh, and things that I have to thank for on that on that EP, I have to say most of it would come down to Dallas Cosmos and, and uh, Wayne Rintoul who who engineered with it, yeah. uh, with him on the on the album. So, yeah. No, oh, well, the, you know, it's all about the mastering, and um, they've mm. done a nice job, but they didn't sing the songs you did, so. Um, now, and, and and they didn't and, and they didn't remix them like you did either. So. <laughs> Like I said, don't hold your breath on the remix. Mate, uh, we've all got a part to play and I'm holding it to it, mate. Uh, so let's let's move on to uh, the pillar cloud because 40 seconds into the song, um, I want you to explain... All hell breaks loose. Yeah, explain to me what I'm hearing. Um, and that's not a bad thing. I thought it was pretty good. So hang on, let me just... I'm going to need to crank it up a little bit. Now this is pillar cloud. Brothers to the birds. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. So we are at 35 seconds. But we must leave now. What am I hearing? You're hearing some claps and some stomping going on. Uh, we, we didn't get any real drums in this uh, in this particular track, so we thought we would improvise. And uh, I, I think Dallas, again with his uh, creative brilliance, uh, managed to, to capture something that I, I definitely didn't plan for on the EP. And clapping and stomping uh, made made an appearance. Well, it's it, I, hey, I mean, usually you're like hearing a drop of bass or uh, you know a kick or something. And yeah, yeah. I kept playing that over and over, and I go, those have got to be feet and hands. Yeah. Did, did you like it? Did you yeah, think that, that was all yeah. right? Yeah. I, you know, and tra well, I mean, if you look at Mumford and Sons and uh, the other one, the Lumineers, I think they do oh, some yeah, of that. Yeah. They do some yeah, of that. Yeah, that's right. And that's what it yeah, reminded yeah. me. But it's good. It's, yeah, I know, well, that's good. I know I, I, it was. I'm a big, big Mumford and Lumineer fan, so that's nice to hear. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. No, it was good. And I kept hearing it. And I mm. go, I know what that is. So Yeah. Well, because the reason I ask you, I'm not just trying to pump my tires by asking if you liked it. It's because I, I, I had a group of, of um, young sound engineer guys who were studying at, at a uni tell me that they, they didn't like the chorus. They didn't like how it sounded. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, really? thanks, thanks for letting me know your opinion. Oh wow! No, I, I I totally hear your music in in a movie. Have you tried to market your uh, music to like indie film? Well, look with, with the publishing that um the Dallas was able to get happening with, um, with I think it's GD seventy eight. Oh, I might be a really bad person if I got that wrong. I think it's GD seventy eight or our um publishing guys in Europe. Uh, I think that there's an opportunity there that okay. maybe, you know, music can get into film. But oh yeah, I'm I'm not, I'm not holding my breath because I know there's so many other great artists out there. No, so well, um, you know, no, I'll, but, I'll just wrap that you're hearing it and maybe the birds are hearing it, mate. Well, there are people that have the they have. I mean, I have a good ear, but there are people that have, you know, hundred times better than me. And you know, when they're doing a project, they'll go, hey, you know, remember that guy we heard? You know, it happens, man. And so uh, what I'm gonna do because one thing I failed to do is when I tag this music. I need to do indie film, and I forgot to do that with uh, ah. the music. So no, it's just so easy because then you know it, people see it. So and now let's. Um, but I I I I I'm glad I was right on that. Uh, the the feet and hands mm. because that was yeah. And and no. there's probably about six different electric guitar parts happening there. Yeah. As well, I think I think the way that Dallas explained it in the studio was he had this vision of like seeing this fire rising up or something coming up out of the ground mm -hmm. and that's kind of how we I suppose mixed the the electric guitars in you know coming out of just a, you know an acoustic pretty vulnerable acoustic guitar uh, into that into that chorus space is uh yeah it's, it's quite interesting no it it works it works and it, it it's it doesn't sound like everything else it sounds like you and um <clears throat> definitely so let's go into uh it was definitely me i promise you i believe you <laughs> let's go on the pool I, of I, Eden. I think that, i think maybe the cat's trying to take some credit for it but um let's see. she might have inspired some of the music but she definitely didn't make the record maybe the next one she needs to get on there 
Well, I will tell you that a cat inspired the Puss Puss Band. Oh, there you go. So the, there's there's actually a common theme. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that's binding us together. Uh, yeah. The Puss Puss Band I, and myself. I, I asked him. I said, okay, guys. I, yeah. I said, okay, tell me about the name. I'm sure you get that a lot. Well, I guess um, someone had a cat in the one of the, one of them had a cat or something, and the the cat's name is Puss Puss. So. Anyway, it's, it's a name. Yeah, it's a unique name, and uh, I, I had to ask. Um, let's get into Pull of Eden because at a, the minute that at the one minute forty four mark, uh, you do have a kick, and it's nice. And in this song too, I heard strings in my head. We've actually tricked you there again, mate. Right, that's actually uh, that's actually a djembe. Really? Yeah, it's not a kick. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> Good and proper. You got me. <laughs> Interesting. I like this song. Thanks, mate. We saw yeah, you need to look. You need to uh, check out Jose Gonzalez from Walter Mitty because that whole tr that whole yeah. soundtrack you would fit right in there. You would fit right in there. And he's he's a uh, Swedish. He's a Swedish. He is. Yeah. Yeah. He's great. I've, I've heard some of his tracks, and mate, I'm ra I'm wrapped that you would even compare me to him. So thank you. Oh yeah, man. All right, let's. See. I'm moving to 140. I'm gonna move to 139 before that. Here it comes. I like that. It's like perfect. So what all's going on in that song, mate? <laughs> that that song, because that that song is probably my my favorite from the EP. Uh -huh. But that's probably the one that's least likely to ever get played on on any sort of radio because it's it's probably means a lot to me, um, and it's it's quite sort of spiritually and ethereal and. You send for me. It makes for, for, for me. It makes a lot of sense. I don't know if that song's going to make sense to anyone else. But I mean, for me, you know, there's things going on sonically with, with obviously with the record. Mm -hmm. But then for me, it's a very spiritual song. Um, I mean, yeah, sonically, we had um, we had the djembe, which which I just love the djembe, and I think I played that, and I'm not a very good player, but we we just managed to get a really simple sound out of it, which which worked for me. Uh, we had some glockenspiel that we. Um, Sorry, I'm not sure if I cut out then. Um, we had a glockenspiel, which we muted as well with the, with the guitar strap and just got some really sort of strange notes out of. And we also... I did this thing where I figured out... and I mean, maybe I should get the guitar out, but it, it might, you, you might be on hold for a minute. It's was a, to get actually it, get... Go get it. Go get it. Oh, jeez, now you're freaking me out. <laughs> All right, you have to edit this out of the YouTube video. Uh, you have to use that. the magic... I Use the that. magic of the internet. <laughs> oh, you know what? It's, I don't think this is going to happen. I, oh, sorry. My, my wife's trying to call me, so uh, no if, uh, if it goes on holding it, I should probably answer her. Um, I'd, I'd rather answer to you than answer to her. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, no, so we, we, we figured out this thing where if I put a, uh, a guitar slide on top of the electric guitar, just like laying flat on my lap, Yep. And and you basically hit you basically hit the slide. It kind of does this interesting thing where it um it sounds really chimey like bells and you sort of move uh, it up and you get I these freaky that. sort of sounds happening. Yeah, so I am not sure I'm sure other people have done it, but in my mind I, I invented it, so that's fine. Wow. Um so <laughs> I I basically have just been um yeah, I, I, I put the slide on there and was just hitting it in different places and getting some noises out of that. And then I think we also had, gee, what else did we have in there? I, I, I really wanted it to be as belly and, and sort of strange, pitchy sounding as we could. And I think Dallas just did an awesome job mixing it. And so I hear that song nearly brought to tears just from everything that he was able to capture from it. Mm -hmm. While as I think other people, you know, it might sort of be a song that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it definitely has a lot of meaning for me in the lyrics. Well, I, I like it. I like the song. It's a good song. Like I said, you fit right in there. I mean, Thanks, mate. You need to Google the, the Secret Life of Walter Mitty and listen to the artists. 
You I will do that. You will fit, straight you after right this phone there. conversation. You need to tell Dallas, contact whoever produced that album, and uh, you know, start networking. So, uh, well, listen, let's. I'm going to wrap this up, but before I go, I like. First of all, it was a pleasure, man. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks. Tom. Oh, oh, absolutely, mate. absolutely. But what I would ask is, uh, send me the other songs so I can play them. Send me the other songs. Uh, Will do. And, and I'll promote them. Um, secondly, tell people who you are and where they can find your music and what you're doing next. Yeah. Well, um, well look, like I just said, we just had a baby. So this year has been a quiet year on the music front. But next year is going to be a big one because we're going to do uh, another album next year. So we've probably got about 10 or 11 new songs that will that'll be on a new Brother to the Birds album. So, yeah, if you keep your eye out on www.brotherthebirds.com, uh, I'm on Facebook as well, Twitter, Instagram, all the good stuff. It's all on there. Keep in touch. You can listen on Spotify and iTunes as well for the last EP. Uh, but yeah, mate, I'll, I'll send you a couple of tracks that, that you might not have heard. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the, the new the new direction's going to be still the folky, alternative folk, ethereal thing. But we're getting in. Uh, well, I, I'm Greek, or I'm part Greek, so I, I'd like to um, be bringing into the music some more Greek and Turkish and oh. ethnic sounding instruments and things. Yeah. Yeah. So so I know that that, that that's going to be great for some, but I know others are going to going to be turned off. I actually I applied for a um for a folk festival in, in Victoria. I, I applied for a number of them. And I, I, I got a message back from one of them saying, oh, no, nah, you know, you haven't been successful in your application. I said, oh, that's all right. I, look, I'm, I'm thinking about actually getting some Turkish musicians to join me. You Is that up, something that would... Look up the Afro Nick. He's a guy I interviewed. He's one oh, who's that? He, he's a Greek musician and he lives in New York. And yeah? He goes to, yeah, he's, he's on... If you go to... And let me back up. This interview will be uploaded yeah. under artist interviews at therunner.com. Go to therunner.com under artist interviews and scroll down. You'll see the Afro Nick. I played his uh, interview this this afternoon. He's 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 Greek. He's awesome. Okay. He's yeah, awesome. Right. The Get Afro with Nick. him. Get with him. Yeah, yeah, right. He's, he's probably my cousin. I'll check him out. Get with him. He he is he is wonderful. He's yeah, okay. he is, he's wonderful, and I think he can yeah, probably well, help you. Well, that sounds good. Yeah. Well, I mean, because they so these guys when they contacted me. Um, back, I said to them, oh, well, you know, maybe there might be some Greek and Turkish musicians that would join me. Would that be of interest? And they said, that will that will make your chances even worse of getting into the festival. <laughs> oh, no, no, so, no. I said, that's a bit harsh. Oh. But uh, at least they were honest with me. So I know it's not going to be everyone's flavor, but I'm, I really love the, um, you know, the, those Eastern sounds. And yeah. I, I definitely don't profess to, to being skilled in, in the ways of, uh, of Eastern music, but... Uh, I, I really want to bring in that East meets West sort of thing into the next record, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Well, I, I, I think if you, as I, I know that the Afro Nick does perform, and he goes back and forth to Greece a oh. lot. I, yeah, it, it's oh, not okay. one of these things where he just he's been in New York for 25 years. I mean, he's been there 10 years, but he goes back. I believe he yeah. goes back. Yeah, well, and I'm, forth. I'm actually going back. Uh, I'm going back next year, so I'll have to definitely have to contact him. Yeah, and he's looking to reach out to help other artists as well. He's he's good, man. Um, check him out. He, he's he's yeah, he's yeah. wonderful. He he's and actually, I'm going to send him a message, and I'll I'll tag you on Twitter. I'm going to tag you in a message, okay? But you guys need to hook great, up. Man. You guys need to hook up. That's great. Um, oh, I appreciate that. So you didn't say your name. In the closing comments, so you My are. My name. Who are you, and what band are you in? Andrew and Glezels from Brother to the Birds. That's right. All right, listen. In Melbourne, Melbourne, Australia, or Melbourne, as Melbourne. you guys in America call it. <laughs> you're so right. <laughs> and I, I just have to say, you're, you're from you're from one of my favorite cities, um, which which is the the location of my favorite film, The Blues Brothers. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> are, are, are you a Blues Brothers fan, Todd? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm a Dan Aykroyd fan. Uh, yes, yes. Great movie. Love, love the Blues Brothers. I wasn't I wasn't <laughs> very pleased about the second and third one. Yeah, not yeah, so no, much. No, the first no, one was no, the no, best. No. So listen, absolutely. Uh, hey, enjoy the rest of your day. It was a pleasure. Uh, I will edit this probably sometime tomorrow, and I'll have it uploaded. I'll send you a message and let you know, okay? 
Thanks, Todd. Mate, it's been a privilege, man. Feel free to call any time. Excellent. Would love to chat again. You're a good man. Thank you for um, for promoting uh, my music and other artists' music. And it's, yeah, it's, it's just been great to chat. And Absolutely. Yeah, we'll stay in touch. All right, hey, thanks a lot, okay? Thanks, man. All right, See take you, care. Bye-bye. See you, bud.